everyone. Happy afternoon, a very good afternoon. Am I audible and visible? Before we start with this class, am I audible and visible? Hello everyone, a very happy afternoon. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. Yes, all right. So uh, welcome to this episode 40 of NF100. Now what is NF100? Basically it is NEET PG and FMG Top 100 Topics. Previously it was Nikita's FMG Top 100 Topics but then I got a lot of queries. Is it important for NEET PG as well? So yes, please remember it's important for NEET PG as well. So we have had 39 episodes so far, all extremely, extremely important. Please watch each one of them. You'll get the links uh, on the Telegram group. And today in episode 40, we have CVS Pharmacology that we are going to discuss, right? Uh, just give me a minute. All right. So in CVS Pharmacology, of course, it's not the entire pharmacology that we are doing, but, but just focusing on the most important points, generally where we tend to make the mistakes is where we are going to focus on in this uh, episode 40. A quick thumbs up, guys, if the audio visual is all good. Okay, that's great. So, when is the next class? The next class is today itself at 5 p.m. We have a special class that is a free live class on the app where we have the next set of fast 5 KBMD. So, we have fast 5 at 5. Uh, KBMD is Khan Banega MD for students who are new here. It's basically a live quiz MCQ discussion that we have where I tell you the tricks on how you could get this answer right. What are the keywords that you should be focusing on in the exam while reading the questions? So, we have this fast five it's approximately like 30 to 40 minutes session but the most productive uh, and the time investment that will give you a lot of returns so 5 p.m is when we have the special class almost every day if you are asked for a code while joining the class use the code dr nikita live so we have we will be meeting next at 5 p.m then tomorrow again we will meet at 12 p.m for the youtube live session where uh, it's your next episode of nf100 episode 41 where we are going to discuss the numericals in PSM, right? More so, it will focus on sensitivity and specificity while apart. The positive predictive value, the negative predictive value, I'll tell you tricks on how to solve those questions. Okay? Uske baad mein, uh, very, very important announcement here. We have Republic Day special six months free extension. If you take a subscription today and till day after tomorrow, that is January 27, a minimum one year subscription, then you will get six months extra extension, right? A very, very good offer. Like if you're planning for minimum one year extension, this is the best time that you can take the subscription. And if you use the code as well, Dr. Nikita, you will get additional 10% off over and above that so till january 27 you have this offer running and you know the best part is side by side we are starting this uh, ultra fast revision batch for neat pg 22 and it's starting on 27th january you will have all the 19 subjects ultra fast revision so if there are students uh, even the fmd students will benefit out of it the neat pg students definitely will benefit out of it in the last two months what exactly you should be revising for all the 19 subjects will be 
be uh, taken care of in this batch and this batch is from 27 january till 12th of february so in that much time all the 19 subjects will be covered apart from that you have the mcq discussion batch also and the course for fmg 2022 also is starting day after it's a five months course so planning to complete the entire syllabus by that time and now we also have the two month subscription right so the neat pg students who are looking for two months you can take that subscription as well for this uh, uh, you know the rapid revision batches okay so let's start with the today's the discussion of cvs pharmacology basically and the first question here it will be in the form of mcqs and flash cards as i said we'll be focusing on the uh, you know the most important points yes sara the ultra fast is your plus course it's only for the subscribers so very very good course basically for your last minute revision and the the main advantage is it's a live class you have live interaction with the educator so that assures ensures that you complete the syllabus which of the following condition precipitates digoxin toxicity yes very good so it is hypokalemia please remember it is hypokalemia which precipitates digoxin toxicity why is that so we will see in the upcoming discussion as well so remember that which electrolyte abnormalities increase the digoxin toxicity which electrolyte abnormalities increase digoxin toxicity hypokalemia and which is the other one how about calcium is it hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia what increases the digoxin toxicity is it hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia yes please remember it is hypokalemia and it is hypercalcemia the increased calcium why is that so again i'll tell you the concept let's have a look at this one so remember it is please note down these points it is hypokalemia and it is hypercalcemia which precipitates your digoxin toxicity okay which precipitates your digoxin toxicity tell me is this a true statement or a false statement now we will understand the concept of digoxin mechanism of action so digoxin pumps sodium inside and calcium outside the cell is it true or is it false digoxin pumps sodium inside and calcium outside the cell is it true or is it false so please remember this is a false statement why see basic like you can always think in the retrograde fashion as well digoxin we know is used for your heart conditions when there is heart failure basically it increases the cardiac contractility right we know that digoxin increases the cardiac contractility what is required to increase the cardiac contractility it is calcium so basically it increases calcium inside the cell this is the basic like we are thinking in retrograde fashion so how will digoxin increase calcium inside the cell by taking calcium inside the cell and in exchange of that it is sodium which goes outside the cell that is how you should be thinking so remember digoxin pumps not sodium it is calcium inside and sodium outside normally what happens let's have a look at this image here okay look at this image so here you have digitalis digoxin which basically inhibits your sodium potassium atpase right sodium potassium atpase in the yesterday's kbmd we saw what is the trick to remember for sodium potassium atpase what goes out what goes in 1 2 3 three letters so it is 3 sodium out out is three letters so three sodium go out k plus is two letters so it is two potassium in is two letters two potassium in right so three sodium go out and two potassium come in that is what we see here sodium going out potassium coming in with the sodium potassium atpase now digitalis inhibits that so sodium will not be able to go out right sodium will not be able to go out so sodium will accumulate inside the cell so what happens with sodium calcium exchanger 
it gets reversed what happens so sodium goes out by the sodium calcium exchanger and the calcium comes in so that increases the calcium increases the troponin c binding and it increases the inotropy that is how basically digitalis acts it inhibits your sodium potassium atp so sodium accumulates it goes out via sodium calcium exchanger and calcium comes in basically it increases the calcium so remember digoxin decreases your sodium potassium atp pump increases the calcium and that leads to positive inotropy what is the other action of digoxin please remember it is vago mimetic it increases the vagal activity so by that what does it do is parasympathetic we know it decreases the av conduction and that is how it decreases the rate right so it will cause your bradi so it decreases the rate remember av conduction decreases with digoxin it decreases the rate okay very very important so that is about your mechanism of action so what happens here basically is digoxin and what else competes with digoxin to bind to the sodium potassium atps it is potassium so digoxin and potassium are competing to bind to the site so that is why when the potassium goes low digoxin binding increases and that increases the toxicity so is that clear now that why hypokalemia increases the digoxin toxicity because there's no competition for digoxin to bind to the site so digoxin can and bind easily in increased amount that increases the toxicity when you have increased the calcium it is similar to your digoxin ka effect digoxin increases calcium increased calcium is similar to digoxin so similar effects that increases the toxicity so please remember it is hypokalemia and hypercalcemia which increases your digoxin toxicity clear with everyone and remember it decreases the av node conduction okay decreases the av node conduction going to the next one digoxin is used only in chronic heart failure not in acute is it true or is it false is this a true statement or is it a false statement digoxin is used only in chronic it is not used in acute heart failure true or false see acute heart failure versus chronic heart failure now this is a false statement right digoxin can be used in acute and chronic both why because what is our main goal in the acute heart failure acutely failed heart it's a decompensated heart do you want to increase the contractility or you want to decrease the contractility further we want to increase the contractility we want to use drugs if heart cannot contract by itself we supplement it with the drugs so we increase the contractility so basically we use inotropic agents positive inotropic agents does digoxin act as positive inotrope or negative inotrope it's positive inotrope right so that is why digoxin will help by increasing the contractility the other thing that we want in acute heart failure is to decrease the load on the heart how will you decrease the load on the heart by decreasing the volume right the fluid in the body giving load to the heart so that is why we use diuretics right we use diuretics we can decrease the load by accumulating the fluid in the periphery and not giving the load on the heart so basically your vasodilators right so basically your vasodilators those are used in acute heart failure morphine is used for symptomatic management in acute heart failure right and that's the reason you must have read about inodilators right inodilators are used in acute heart failure they are inotropes and they are vasodilators as well tell me a drug which is inodilator it acts as a positive inotrope and it acts as a vasodilator as well which is a drug which is inodilator used in acute heart failure it is acting by both increasing the contractility causing the vasodilatation which is that drug Yes anyone what is the example of inodilator
inodiluted. Now, basically, it is your phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors that we use. That is your amrinone and milrinone, right? You have amrinone, milrinone, which is your inodilator. Nitrates are only venodilators predominantly. They don't have the uh, positive inotropic action. Phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors, what do they basically do? They inhibit your cyclic AMP degradation. So that is how they increase the cyclic AMP. And we know that cyclic AMP is required for contractility. So positive inotrope and it's a vasodilator as well. That is how it acts as inodilator. So remember inodilators used in your acute heart failure. Amrinone, milrinone, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. Then you have other drugs which is used in acute heart failure and it basically acts by causing your vasodilatation your bnp analog which one is that bnp analog used in acute heart failure neseritide okay remember that is your neseritide which is your uh, bnp analog used in acute heart failure okay so these are all the points remember digoxin is used in both acute and chronic but if i ask you the statement Digoxin, when used in chronic heart failure, it increases the survival. Is it true or is it false? Digoxin increases the survival when used in chronic heart failure. Is this true or is this false? Remember, it is a false statement. Basically, it does not increase the survival. The drugs acting on remodeling. Most important drug in chronic heart failure is what is the most important drug in chronic heart failure? Those are basically your AC inhibitors or ARBs, which prevent the remodeling, right? Then you have beta blockers as well. You have AC inhibitors, ARB, ke jase, acting on aldosterone receptors, pyronolactone. These are the most important drugs which increase the survival. They act on remodeling. So beta blockers, AC inhibitors, ARB, spironolactone are very, very important. Okay? So look at this one. Drugs used in chronic heart failure. Most important, AC inhibitors. They are used as first line therapy because they act on remodeling. Now, if the patient is intolerant to AC inhibitors, what is the side effect that we see with AC inhibitors? Because of increased bradykinin. That is your dry cuff, angioedema, dry cuff, angioedema. Very, very important question is the side effect with AC inhibitors. So in that cases, we can use ARBs. If there is intolerance, then we can use ARBs. Beta blockers, first line therapy. Spironolactone, eplerinone, again your first line drugs, right? These are mineralocorticoid receptor antagonists. Then you have the two other drugs that you have. Sacubitril valsartan, that is your combination of valsartan is your ARB and you have neprilysin inhibitor. Okay, neprilysin, you can remember this as sacubitril. Okay, sacubitril, neprilysin, when I say neprilysin, Relysin inhibitor, right? So, neprilysin RIL inhibitor. Okay, that is what you have. So, neprilysin inhibitor along with your ARB, that is basically your ARNI, combination of ARNI, that is ARB and neprilysin inhibitor, that is sacubitril. Then you have evabradin. Okay, evabradin is inhibitor of your funny current in the SA node. It's the inhibitor of funny current. You can remember this EVA is a person who's a very, very funny person, right? So remember, EVA inhibits your funny current in the SA node. Plus, you have digoxin also, which can be used in chronic heart failure, but it does not increase the survival. Okay, remember that. Okay. Now, so which are the drugs which reduce the mortality? That means increase the survival in patients with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. We said AC inhibitors, if intolerant ARB, you can use combination ARB and neprilysin inhibitor, that is sacubitril, beta blockers, aldosterone antagonist, pyronolactone, eplerinone, plus also your hydralazine and nitrates. Remember, basically, digoxin does not reduce the mortality. That is the important point that I want you to make note of. Even hydralazine and nitrates, 
they can reduce the mortality okay so basically you have all the a's you have b's and you have the dilators hydralazine and nitrates beta blockers ac inhibitors arbs arni aldosterone antagonist beta blockers and you have dilators is that clear with everyone a quick thumbs up before we proceed yes Phosphodiesterase free inhibitor, your inotrope is basically for your uh, acute heart failure predominantly. Okay, that is for your acute heart failure. All right. Okay, let's see the next one. Tell me what will be the answer to this. Not seen with digoxin. Which of the following is not seen with digoxin? The ECG change basically. QT shortening, PR shortening, ST depression, T wave inversion. absolutely right very good that is your b okay so another important point that we already learned that digoxin decreases your av node conduction and we know that in ecg av node conduction is basically indicated by your pr interval whatever prolongs your av node conduction you will have pr prolongation we have seen the mnemonic also for digoxin pr is prolonged right you have pr prolonged you have qt which is qt that means qt is short st which is depressed right you have st depression st is depressed t is full t that means t wave inversion so qt qt ST depressed, T ulti, PR shortening nahi hota hai, PR prolongation hota hai with digoxin. Okay, that is PR prolongation. Clear with everyone? So, please remember digoxin decreases the AV node conduction. It leads to PR prolongation. Very, very important. Okay. Next one. Which of the following is L type calcium channel blocker? Which of the following is L type calcium channel blocker? Yes, what do you think? Which of the following is L type calcium channel blocker? Absolutely, it's all of the above. It's not only deltiasm, it is all of the above. So remember in types of calcium channel, basically we have L type, T type and N type. So the calcium channel blockers that we read in your heart wala chapter, CVS pharmacology, antihypertensives, heart failure submit, that is uh, basically your L type calcium channel blockers. So dihydropyridines and the non ones also. It is ethosuximide, which is your T type calcium channel blocker. Where is ethosuximide used? Seizures, epilepsy, absence seizures, right? It basically blocks your thalamus major calcium channel. Hote. Unko block karta hai. So remember that the heart wala is basically your L type calcium channel. All of them are L type calcium channel blockers. Okay. Next one, which of the following is not a contraindication for AC inhibitors? Which of the following is not a contraindication for AC inhibitors? Hypokalemia, pregnancy, hyperkalemia or bilateral renal artery stenosis. Correct. It is hypokalemia because remember that AC inhibitors, they cause hyperkalemia. So if the patient already has hyperkalemia, you don't want more hyperkalemia, so you will not use AC inhibitor. Rather, if the patient has hypokalemia, you want to increase the potassium, then you give AC inhibitors. Remember, they are contraindicated in pregnancy. In pregnancy, antihypertensives, you can give labetalol, you can give alpha methyl dopa, hydralazine can be given, right? Remember, AC inhibitors are not given. Bilateral renal artery stenosis. Why are AC inhibitors? inhibitors contraindicated what is the concept behind the ac inhibitors contraindicated in renal artery stenosis because whenever there is renal artery stenosis that affects your gfr that reduces your glomerular filtration rate so whenever the gfr decreases the body compensates by activating your ras system renin angiotensin aldosterone system so 
if you inhibit the ac if you give ac inhibitors basically you are inhibiting this ras so you are leading to the decrease in gfr so the patient can have acute renal failure can develop in these patients the gfr decreases significantly okay so remember the ras compensation is blocked that is why in renal artery stenosis you will not give ac inhibitors ac inhibitors are the drug of choice in diabetic patients with hypertension because they prolong your diabetic nephropathy right the changes of diabetic nephropathy so if you have diabetics with hypertension ac inhibitors are the drug of choice okay so remember the drugs used in heart failure that can cause hyperkalemia beta blockers why how do you remember yesterday in kbmd we saw do you remember that question from yesterday's kbmd what was the clinical scenario where we saw why the patient has hypokalemia what was that clinical scenario let's see who remembers that what was the clinical scenario there where we had talked about hypokalemia very good ef so albuterol we saw in yesterday's kbmd albuterol by being your beta agonist it causes your intracellular potassium shift that leads to hypokalemia so opposite if it is beta blocker the intracellular shift will not happen so that will lead to your hyperkalemia so remember it interferes with beta to mediated intracellular potassium intake ac inhibitors basically aldosterone secretion aldosterone will decrease that will lead to hyperkalemia similarly arbs potassium sparing diuretics like your spironolactone and even digoxin leads to your hyperkalemia why because we saw that at the same site digoxin and potassium bind so if digoxin binds the potassium will not be able to bind and go inside so the potassium will increase okay the potassium will increase so remember all these drugs basically lead to hyperkalemia digoxin potassium sparing diuretics ac inhibitors beta blockers which drugs cause hypokalemia diuretics right increase potassium excretion that lead to hypokalemia okay diuretics lead to hypokalemia okay next one calcium channel blockers belong to which class of antiarrhythmics class 1 2 3 4 channel blockers belong to which class very good ef absolutely right that is your class 4 okay that is your class 4 some quick tricks on uh, remembering your antiarrhythmic drugs ka classification remember class 1 that is your n n is your sodium channel blockers okay it is your sodium so remember the second alphabet b a b c d that is your beta blockers c is your when you write a it is made up of three lines 1 2 and 3 so that is your potassium channel 4 is your c and a that is third alphabet plus first alphabet that is your fourth so that is your calcium channel blocker okay that is your calcium channel blocker fifth is your miscellaneous easy to remember so one is basically your sodium channel blocker two is the second alphabet b beta blocker three is your potassium and four is your three plus one that is calcium channel blocker okay so one sodium two beta three potassium and four is your calcium channel blocker that's a very easy trick to remember your anti arrhythmic drugs now what are the examples in your class 1 you have class 1a class 1b and you have class 1c so remember for class 1a it is quinine that is quinidine proclaimed that is procanamide disopyramide that is 2 pyramid so remember for class 1a the mnemonic is queen proclaimed right it's the queen of egypt jahan pe pyramids hote hain so the queen of egypt proclaimed two pyramids two pyramids that is quinidine okay procanamide and two pyramids is disopyramide okay that is disopyramide okay and remember that lignocaine lido is your second that is your class 1b okay that is your class 1b out of this it is your class 1a which leads to prolongation of ap the action potential duration 
Another mnemonic for your class 3. Remember for class 3 it is AIDS. That is amiodarone, ebutylide, you have dopitalide and sotelol. AIDS is your class 3. And you also have verna calant. As the term says verna calant, it is your potassium antagonist. So it is your potassium wala, it is class 3. Okay, it is your class 3. So even that causes your prolongation of action potential duration. So look at this question now. Following class of antiarrhythmics can cause torsidus G pointers. What do you think would be the answer to this? I gave you a end in the discussion just now. Following class, this is very, very important. Which class of antiarrhythmics can cause torsidus D pointers? Very good. Fes, EF, absolutely right. 1, A and 3. So remember, torsidus D pointers is basically precipitated by QT prolongation. Tell me the electrolyte abnormality that causes QT prolongation. Which electrolyte abnormality causes QT prolongation? Hypokalemia, hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia? Hypocalcemia or hypercalcemia? It is hypocalcemia and yes, hypomagnesemia as well. Hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia. So basically the concept, remember in easy way, when calcium comes, then the hamara conduction, hai, the ventricular conduction that is prolonged, that prolongs the QT. So decreased calcium, you have increased time. So that is your QT prolongation. And whatever prolongs the QT, that leads to your torsidus G pointers. So when you write Q, T e. e is basically rhyming with 3. So remember class 3 drugs. So class 3. And QT jab aap ulta padoge, it is T and Q. Q is very similar to A. So remember it is your T is like your 1 and this is 1A. So you have class 1A and class 3 drugs which will basically cause QT prolongation. So remember QT is like 3, T is like 3. Ulta karo isko, this is 1A. So class 1A and class 3. Do you remember we already discussed this? Ki why do these drugs, they will prolong the QT and they will lead to torsidus G pointers? Because they increase the action potential duration. Why do they increase the action potential duration? Because they also inhibit the potassium channels. So class 1A are both sodium and potassium channel blockers. So when you block the potassium, the repolarization takes long. So that increases the action potential duration, increases the QT and leads to torsidus G-pointers. Okay, that is what the concept is. All right, coming to the next one. Quick revision of your diuretics, the site of action. Very, very important. So the major drugs that you have is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. You have loop diuretics. You have thiazide diuretics. Just remember it alphabetically. C, fir L or fir T. And that is how in the nephron also the action is, the site is. Subse pehle PCT mein, this is your carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Then this one, the thick ascending limb, is your loop C, L and then you have the early DCT that is your thiazide. This is where you will have the potassium sparing diuretics. Okay, that is your spironolactone vagera. So remember, pehle I got carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. That is your loop diuretics. And this is your thiazide diuretics. CLT, alphabetically. Okay, loop diuretics act on sodium potassium 2 chloride. Thiazide is just your sodium chloride. Okay, it's just your sodium chloride. It's not potassium. Okay, so remember this. And... Uh, Right. Which of these drugs cause acidosis and which of these drugs cause alkalosis? We have, been, we have been discussing all of that in the KBMDs. I hope you guys remember. Which of these will cause acidosis and which will cause alkalosis? Out of the four groups, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, right? Then you have your loop diuretics, thiazide and potassium sparing. Which causes acidosis? Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors will cause acidosis. Absolutely right. Type 2 RTA, right? Dimox. 
पोटेशियम स्पेलिंग इंक्रीज पोटेशियम इज एसिडोसिस तो इवन स्पाइरोनोलेक्टोन दैट विल कॉज योर एसिडोसिस हाइपोकैलीमिया वाले लूप और थाइजाइड दे विल कॉज योर एल्कोलोसिस एंड आल्सो रिमेंबर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट दैट लूप लूजेस कैल्शियम इन द यूरिन राइट सो बेसिकली देयर इज हाइपरकैल्सीयूरिया वर्सेस थाइजाइड डायूरेटिक्स दे कॉज hypocalciuria they decrease the calcium in the urine that is why if you have a patient of renal stones you will give thiazides okay remember this is a difference in the side effect loop loses calcium thiazide does not lose calcium okay very very important okay let's come to the next discussion here that is your anti anginal drugs what do you think is the answer to this question Which of the following anti-anginal drugs it acts by inhibiting your P fox? So you have some very good mnemonics here, basically to remember the anti-anginal drugs: ranolazine or trimetazidine. I see the confusion here, guys. Don't get confused. I'll tell you the easy trick to remember this. The answer is trimetazidine. Okay, what is the easy trick? ranolazin n a n o l remember the sodium n a and l a that is your sodium the late sodium current is what basically it acts on that is your ranolazin evapradine we already said eva is a funny person it inhibits the funny current in the sa node right sa node try metazidine it is meta that means basically it inhibits the metabolism metabolism p fox remember is like your partial uh, your peroxisomal fatty acid oxidation fatty acid oxidation is basically your metabolism so that is try metazidine how about fasudil what is the mechanism of action of fasudil what is the mechanism of action of fasudil very good that is your ro kinase inhibitor okay that's your ro kinase inhibitor so remember it's like a dilator here fasudil dilator ro is basically determining your resistance in a vessel so flow dilatation and resistance are related so remember fasudil is your ro kinase inhibitor okay so let's have a look at this the anti anginal drugs which are the drugs used in angina अक्यूट एंजाइना हुआ हम देते हैं नाइट्राइट्स इनहेलेशनल अमाइल नाइट्राइट दे सकते हैं नाइट्रेट्स रिमेंबर आर प्री डोमिनेंटली वीनो डायलेटर एंड दे रिड्यूस द प्री लोड बाई कॉजिंग वीनो डायलेटेशन All the uh, fluid is in the veins that decreases the preload. Calcium channel blockers. Remember, it's your L type in the heart. You have dihydropyridine. That is your amlodipin, nifedipin. The name tells you. Di P, dihydropyridine. Amlodipin, nifedipin, or dihydropyridine. Non ones are verapamil and diltiazem. Beta blockers. बेसिकली दे डिक्रीज द हार्ट रेट क्योंकि ए बी नोड वगैरह पे भी एक्ट करते हैं एस ए नोड कॉन्ट्रेक्टिलिटी भी कम करेंगे ऑक्सीजन डिमांड भी ऑल्सो देर बी डिक्रीजिंग दीज आर दर ड्रग्स दैट यू आर टेस्टेड अपॉन रिसेंटली रेनोलाजन लेट सोडियम चैनल ब्लॉकर इवाब्रडन इनिबिट्स द फनी करंट ट्राइमेटाजन P fox metabolism fasudil is ro kinase what we are left with is nicorandil remember you can write nicorandil as your nicorandil so remember it's your ko that means is your potassium channel opener it is the agonist it is not your antagonist it is potassium channel opener that is your nicorandil okay so these are the drugs used in angina you have nitrates calcium channel blocker beta blockers and you have the other drugs okay then you have the other drugs what is the side effect that you see when you give verapamil always asked very very important remember constipation and there is bradycardia okay constipation and bradycardia it acts on the av node it leads to your sort of av nodal block that is why calcium channel blockers should never be combined with calcium channel blockers should never be combined with which group of drugs which also block the av node that is your beta blockers okay do not combine calcium channel blocker and beta blocker because both of them will lead to significant av block okay both of them will lead to significant av block and in your antiarrhythmics 
इट इज योर नॉन डाइहाइड्रोपाइरिडीन कैल्शियम ब्लॉकर्स वेरापामिल एंड डिल्टियाजम इट्स नॉट योर एम्लोडिपिन एंड निफिडिपिन ओके द एंटी एरेमिक्स इंक्लूड योर वेरापामिल एंड डिल्टियाजम ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दैट ओके ऑल्सो रिमेंबर दैट ठीक है इज दिस क्लियर विथ एवरी वन रिगार्डिंग द डिस्कशन ऑफ सी वेज फार्मेकोलॉजी आई जस्ट टच अपॉन फ्यू मिक्सड बाय रैंडम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट वेर वी टेन टू मेक द मिस्टेक्स ओके सो दिस वॉज योर एपिसोड फोर्टी ऑफ एन एफ हंड्रेड वेन आर वी मीटिंग नेक्स्ट टूडे फाइव पी एम विद अनादर इंटरेस्टिंग फास्ट फाइव के बी एम डी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट्स अ फ्री लाइफ क्लास फॉर एवरी वन यू कैन ज्वाइन यूजिंग द कोड डॉक्टर निकिता लाइफ वेन इज द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड फोर्टी वन ऑफ एन एफ हंड्रेड tomorrow 12 pm okay tomorrow 12 pm where we said we are going to discuss the uh, psm numerical sensitivity specificity uska kafi sara practice karne wale hain so that we are thorough with that topic okay so thank you so much everyone for joining in i hope you've benefited out of this session and see you again today at 5 pm on the n academy app and then tomorrow at 12 pm okay thank you so much and goodbye take care keep studying keep revising and keep winning thank you